Would you like to accelerate your career and reach your full potential in just minutes a day? Welcome to the Lead X Show with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. What are some quick ways you can get people to like you and to trust you? Hello everyone, Kevin Cruz here, helping you to get 1% better each and every day. Today we're gonna learn how to improve our people skills. But first, I wanna encourage you to visit leadx.org. Sign up for our newsletter packed with actionable tips that you can try out right away to fulfill your potential, leadx.org. Our guest today is the founder and CEO of Likeable Local, a social media software company, and co-founder of Likeable Media, a word of mouth marketing agency. He's an international keynote speaker, New York Times best-selling author of three books, including The Art of People. You may have already seen him on CNBC, ABC World News Tonight, or the CBS Early Show. Our guest is Dave Kirpin. Welcome, Dave. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Now, Dave, we're going to talk about the art of people in just a minute, but I'd like to start with some more general questions for our audience first. Is that okay? Yeah, let's do it. What advice would you give to a young professional who's eager to get ahead in her career? Uh, you know, pay attention to people, listen more than you talk, um, and think more about how you can help others than how you can help yourself. And, and you'll see that the, the converse ends up getting, uh, get, getting uh, uh, you what you want in the end. There's that old saying, Dave, God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason, right? It's totally true. And, you know, listening, I write a lot about listening because I, I think it's the single most uh, important and yet underrated and underappreciated skill. Um, and so many people uh, think they're good listeners when they're not. They're actually just waiting to talk. They're not actually truly listening. That's right. So share with us uh, a time when maybe early in your career you failed and what did you learn from it? Sure. So, you know, one of uh, one of my biggest uh, gaffes uh, early on in my first company's uh, career story, I was uh, one of our biggest clients, a telecommunications company uh, who will remain nameless, but a very large company that that everyone will have heard of. Um, we were doing some work for them and I, I had all these big ideas and I, I felt like my actual client wasn't really. Uh, paying attention. So I went over her head and I scheduled a meeting with her boss, the, the vice president of the company. And uh, a couple days later, I got an email saying, uh, how dare you go go uh, uh, over my head? And uh, we lost the account another week later and it was a $500,000 mistake. So it, it was definitely one that that hurt a lot. And I, and I realized how important it is you know, to kind of play politics and kind of play by the rules of uh, someone else's game when when you're not the one that's, uh, you know, in complete control. That's an expensive lesson to learn. Yeah, no, it, it is. And, you know, one of the nice things about you know having your own business is you, you, you can make decisions like that. Um, obviously, that was a risky one and, and it sort of bit me in the in the butt. But um it's good to know, to, rem to remind yourself that, you know, you, you have to think about other people and how they're going to react when you do something. And you, you just there's always um, unintended and, and, and often uh, unpredicted consequences of, of our actions. Now, Dave, you're a crazy, busy entrepreneur, author, keynote speaker, family man. What do you think about this whole topic, uh, you know, around work life balance? And do you have any tips for achieving it? Yeah, I mean, I think to, to an extent, the whole concept of work-life balance is a bit of a myth in as much as, you know, we all create whatever balance works for us. Um, that being said, for me, um, I, I am um, a big fan of, of what Sheryl Sandberg calls ruthless prioritization and, and scheduling. Um, and, and it's funny because my wife used to, used to think I was crazy for how scheduled I was. And I, I am scheduled from, you know, wake up till bedtime. Um, Often by the 15 minutes, um, what I, one of my mentors is a guy by the name of Jim McCann. He's the uh, founder and uh, former longtime CEO of 1-800-Flowers.com. And Jim actually schedules by the five minutes, if you can believe that, which is insane. But uh, I'm not quite at that level yet. But I schedule things out by the 15 minutes, and it really, really helps me stay uh, on task and stay focused. And frankly, 
be a lot more productive, I think, than I would have been. And, and I'm able to schedule, you know, what train I'm going to be on every day so that I'm home by 530 so I can have dinner with my kids and help them with their homework and uh, put them to bed and then have some time with my wife and then have some writing time. And I, I just think the more we if, we if we put it in our calendars, it's going to happen. If we don't put it in our calendars, well, it, it just might not happen. Dave, your most recent book is The Art of People, 11 Simple People Skills That Will Get You Everything You Want. I didn't even mention this to you before we started um, recording the show. This is no BS. This book was one of my favorite books of 2016. And in fact, I would say it's, it's probably in my top two favorite books of the year. Whoa, thank you. Now, now, of course, as a competitor, I'm dying to know what your other favorite was. Well, my other favorite, it came out towards the end of 2016, is Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Cool. Uh, he's actually coming on the show in three or four days. And Chris is a former FBI negotiator, and uh, this book has a lot of contrarian ideas when it comes to negotiating. Um, it's a really, really good book. But your book, Dave, what I tell people is that it's kind of like the classic How to Win Friends and Influence People but the advice isn't 100 years old. It's very modern, very practical uh, from someone who walks the talk. So I just love how practical your book is. And I want to hit on a few of these things. So the first is, you know, you say there's a magic word or two that can get everyone to want to be around you. What are those words? Sure, sure. Thank well, first of all, thank you so much for your very, very uh, kind words. I know you're such a, 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 a vociferous reader that, that that really means a lot to me that you would say that. So, I mean, when people greet each other, we always ask, how are you doing? And the typical answer used to be fine. And now it's funny because that's changed a little bit because of how, how busy people are. People, and now the, the typical answer is busy um, or good or OK. Um I went to a conference and learned this years and years ago. You know, when people ask me how I'm doing, I say fantastic because you know what? At the end of the day, I am fantastic, right? I mean, why, why not be fantastic? And it, it absolutely gets people's attention every single time. And they're like, Oh wow, I want to hang out with you. What are, what are you on? What, what's going on with you? Why are things so awesome? Um, and then the other word that I talk about is more in the sense of, uh, when I am addressing my, my company or giving a speech, um, the word that I love to use to get people's minds going in a positive way is the word imagine. Because we all love to think big and imagine. We all have that piece of us that's kind of like that, that childlike innocence still in us. And when we hear the word imagine, it sets that off. And, it, and no matter how jaded or cynical you are, and I'm, I'm a New Yorker, so I know lots of very jaded, cynical people, right? When, when, when you hear the word imagine, um, it, it kind of opens things up a little bit for people. I can't help but dive in and just support this, Dave. You know, that word fantastic. I always tell people emotions are contagious. You know, we spread our emotions like we're spreading the flu. If you walk around all hangdog, you know, saying, oh, I'm crazy busy, crazy busy, you know, that sets off a certain negative vibe. Yep. When you answer fantastic, all of a sudden you're boosting everyone uh, around you. They want more of it. And I love that word imagine. I think it's one of the most powerful uh, words in persuasion psychology. And anyone who looks at my own marketing copy, you know, for my books or my online courses, they're going to see I use that word a lot. I'll say Imagine if you could get an extra hour a day of free time or, you know, imagine if your team thought you were the best boss they ever had. You know, whatever it is, that word imagine is a magical word. It, it really is. And, and I can't agree with you enough. I, I, I like to say enthusiasm is contagious and so is lack of enthusiasm. And so I, I, I agree with you, you know, uh, totally. And there's some interesting things in the book. I, I don't know if you're going to ask about them, but I'll, I'll just say that that when you're not naturally in a fantastic mood, um, I, I, and, and you need to be a leader or you need to be persuasive. Um, I think you need to figure out a way to get yourself into that, that fantastic mood. I think that's a great lead in Dave. I know you talk about these things called mirror neurons. So what are those and, and how do they relate uh, to this conversation? Yeah. So mirror neurons are actual science that kind of proves what we're, what we're just talking about, that we have neurons in our in ourselves that actually mirror the mood of the person that's speaking to us. So if, if, if you're in a great mood and you're talking to people, it, they're actually going to physically have a response 
and be in a better mood than they were. And similarly, if you're in a crap mood and, 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 and if you're, if you're, if you're tired and you're annoyed and you're just, you know, you're not in a good place, then the people that you're talking to are going to literally feel that as well. Again, these are so practical and actionable. You say that when you first meet someone, there's one question that's the most important one to ask them. That's right. And I tell the story in the book of a guy by the name of Michael Kislin, who uh, was uh, one of just literally hundreds of people that solicit me every week. Uh, and he's a financial planner. And he sent me an email that stood out a, a little bit from uh, the other solicitations that I get. And the email said, I'd love to have just 15 minutes with you. And I just have one question for you. And I promise I won't sell you anything. So I said, all right, I'll give the guy a chance. And, you know, I, I, I let him have his 15 minutes and I scheduled it right in. And, um, you know, he actually came to my office and, and, and he said, you know, my one question is, is how can I help you? And I said, what do you mean? Like, uh, what can you sell me? I said, he said, no, no, no. Like, how can I help you? Like, maybe I can make an introduction to you or, uh, an introduction for you or, or make a reference or, or, or I'll help you out in some, some way or, the, or another. And I said, all right, cool. I'll give you a shot here. I'm, uh, I'm raising money for my latest uh, software company here. And, uh, if you know any venture capitalists, I'd love an intro. And he made he made a couple of intros for me, which was so kind. Um, and, and then he and then I said, well, so while you're here, you might as well tell me about what you do and see if there's a fit. And he said, no, absolutely. I promised I I, I, uh, I wouldn't sell you. So that's that's just not going to happen. And I was amazed by the, the the fact that he truly stuck to that um, that that single mindedness with regard to how he could help me. So, of course, several months later, uh, I had an opportunity. I needed some help with financial planning. Uh, which and, uh, I don't even sorry, but I didn't mention that he was a financial planner, and um, and so I called him up, and uh, he ended up becoming my financial planner, and then I recommended him to several others, and you know he's made a lot of money off of me, not because he sold me, but because he truly was was selfless and 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 out to help me, and I, if you can ask, by the way, like so many things, you have to be sincere about it. You have to be authentic about it. You can't just sort of take this as a, as a, as a trick and then, you know, go out and, and try to trick people, right? But if you can truly ask, how can you help someone, um, sincerely, then, then, then that's going to open up some great doors for you. That's a story where you gave someone 15 minutes and it turned out to be great for both of you. And in your book, you tell a funny story about uh, how you got to, to finally meet with a potential investor, but he only gave you eight minutes. Yeah, totally. So uh, I waited for months to, to meet with this guy and I was so excited and I thought this was uh, going to be a terrific opportunity to either get an investment in our company or or, or have a major partner. And um, I showed up at 10 o'clock for the meeting and the um, uh, receptionist brought me right right back. And um, uh, within eight minutes, I was out the door and I was like, how the hell did I only spend eight minutes. But the crazy thing was I was really happy. And what he had done was very quickly assess the situation, determined that he wasn't going to invest, but figured out ways to help me and literally wrote out two emails introducing me to two people while we were meeting. And then, and then very skillfully put his hand out and said, thank you so much for coming in. It was so great to meet you. And the amazing thing was as I was walking out thinking I was I, on the one hand, I was thinking, Shit, I only got eight minutes. On the other hand, I was thinking, wow, that was really valuable. And the lesson there, it was just, it was a great reminder that, that we don't have to take 30 minutes for a meeting or an hour for a meeting or 90 minutes for a meeting. We can be efficient and still be super valuable in, in helping others. And, and, and that was actually, you know, it was a wonderful lesson. By the way, one thing I didn't mention uh, earlier when you asked me, uh, when we're talking about how important it is to say, how can I help you and to, and to be valuable for others? A lot of people, they, they struggle with getting creative and thinking out of the box on this. And they think, well, how, how can I be helpful for somebody, you know, of, of great importance, of great success, et cetera. And, you know, I speak all, all the time to audiences all over the world. And when I speak to college students, for instance, or, or young people, um, one of the things I say is, okay, how many people in the room are, are, are on Snapchat? And then everyone raises their hand. And I say, you know, guess what? If you were to call up right now or email or send a LinkedIn note 
um, to any Fortune 500 CEO on the planet and say, hey, I'd love 15 minutes, and I don't know if this could would be helpful, but I would love to teach you how to use Snapchat and why Snapchat is so important as a communications um, a new way of communicating. I can pretty much guarantee you that every one of those Fortune 500 CEOs could use the help. Now, whether they would take you up on the offer, I, I can't promise, but the point is we all have value to give to everyone on the planet. It's just a matter of figuring out that match. Dave, I think this is so spot on. You know, maybe not every CEO would say yes, but if you contacted 10, you'd sure get a lot. You know, I think youth is a, a superpower. It's easier to get access to CEOs, to multimillionaires, to best selling authors when you're younger than when you're older. I mean, everybody wants to be helpful. They want to give back. That's right. Before we wrap up, Dave, I like to challenge our listeners to get 1% better every single day. Can you give them something uh, they can try out immediately? Well, let's see. I, I would say that, um, you know, that we, we talked about being fantastic, certainly, and, 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 and that. And, what, and another thing I would say is actually pay attention to your listening versus talking ratio and see if you can listen just a little bit more than you do uh, than you do today. And once you've gotten to that, that, that level of feeling like you're, you're listening better, you can try um, a couple of more advanced skills that I talk about in the book called uh, mirroring and validating where you're essentially repeating back what you're hearing, focusing specifically on the emotion that you're hearing. And you'll find that when people, when you mirror people and validate people, it's even better than listening to them because they feel much better. They really feel and know that you're paying attention to them. Love it. What's the best way our listeners can find out more about you and your books? I am as easy to reach as anyone on the planet. All you need to do is uh, look up Likeable uh, or, or my name, Dave Kirpin. You can uh, ask me questions. I, I, one of my core values is responsiveness, so I literally respond to every uh, tweet, LinkedIn message, Facebook uh, message, etc. cetera. Um, and I have a money-back guarantee out there on my book. So anyone that buys Art of People and doesn't like it, simply send me a tweet, and I will uh, send you a check for however much you paid uh, for the book and you don't even need to send me the book back. So that's, um, I, I like to put that out there. And, and, and I also meet with anyone on the planet that wants to meet with me. You just have to go to scheduledave.com and it takes, there's a bit of a waiting list there, but every Thursday afternoon I have office hours and, and meet with anyone that wants to chat. That is just an amazing offer, the book and also of your time. Dave, I know uh, one of your favorite charities is the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill. And I just wanted to let you know that I've already sent them a check for $1,000 as a small thank you for your time today on the show. That is absolutely amazing. What an incredible uh, surprise and delight, Kevin. Thank you so, so much. You're welcome. All right, friends, you've just been mentored by an expert in relationships and social capital, Dave Kirpin. You can get The Art of People from Amazon.com or your favorite bookstore. Of course, get all the links and show notes from this interview over at leadx.org. And I hope you'll take just one minute to leave a short, honest review over on iTunes or Stitcher. And when you do, just let me know. Send me an email. I'm at kevin at leadx.org. And we'll invite you into the private LeadX Ambassador group on Facebook. That's where we give away uh, cool stuff every month, provide special access to our authors, and just have a lot of fun. Until next time, remember this quote from Dave, there's no better way to show that you care about the person you're meeting with than to genuinely, authentically ask her what you can do to help.